God doesn't exist. A human being is the measure of all things. Envision discovering a 5,000-year-old manuscript that has the secret to solving the mysteries of human existence. In addition to offering a unique window into prehistoric beliefs and predictions, this recently found document conveys a chilling message regarding the future of humanity. According to academics, the book investigates the life of Enoch, a holy man with knowledge of worlds beyond our own. Come along as we explore this intriguing finding that has the potential to completely change our perception of what it means to be human. A fascinating figure in the Bible, Enoch overcame death itself, something that very few people have ever done. His mysterious tale never fails to enthrall audiences. His inexplicable disappearance is the subject of much speculation, as there is no record of any supernatural event. Even though it was short, Enoch had a remarkable life. In an uncommon turn of events, God decided to take him away rather than allow him to pass away normally because he had given his life to serving God. The Old Testament contains the account of Enoch, notably in Genesis 5.18. Characters like Hanok, Henoch, and Hanok are similar in name, but Enoch is distinct because he makes a point about where he came from. Enoch, who was born at 162 to his father Jared, is descended from Adam. Methuselah, the Bible's longest living individual, was fathered by Enoch. Enoch had a large family during his life, and there were rumors that God had snatched him. The mystery surrounding Enoch's destiny heightens the suspense in his story and forces us to consider the puzzling details of his remarkable existence. Enoch's name has great significance since it represents who he is, his lineage, and his actions while he was on earth. Even though Enoch is only mentioned in three Bible lines, he is revered in the same way as other well-known Old Testament prophets like Noah, Abraham, and Moses. Similar to his deeds with God, his name means dedicated or to train. The deeper significance of Enoch's name suggests a voyage with a goal that is distinct from previous prophets in the biblical story. He walked with God in an exceptional companionship that makes him stand out because of his special relationship with him. These few verses encourage investigation into the tremendous meaning of Enoch's divine connection by providing a glimpse into his devoted journey. The life of Enoch has provoked much debate among academics and religious authorities. Some others think God took him because of his unwavering commitment, even though he was born into a time of corruption, hate, and wickedness. On the other hand, opinions of how long he lived differ. Enoch's life was still mostly unknown, and not much was known about his amazing accomplishments and contributions. Among his other sons and daughters, one of his children was identified, lending an aura of mystery to his whole persona. Other than his unshakable devotion to God, which remained unsaid, there were no indicators of how he conducted his life. Biblical accounts claim that Enoch lived an astounding 365 years on earth, defying the idea of mortality. It was not revealed how he departed from this life. Some beliefs suggest that Enoch was treated differently because of his journey while still alive from earth to the kingdom of God. According to legend, the entries in the 5,000-year-old book found in Egypt disclosed a horrifying truth about human existence. One version of the Book of Enoch claims that he entered heaven more than once and that it wasn't limited to a single instance. As he prepared to go to heaven, according to chapter 64, Enoch assembled people and gave them a lesson on how to follow God's path with integrity, humility, honesty, and hope, among other virtues. When Enoch was alive, more than 2,000 people are said to have seen him ascend to heaven. As the embodiment of God's majesty, Enoch was revered and feared, and God at that time thought highly of him. Given that other nations may be able to see, touch, and feel their gods, this was distinct from the Hebrews' aloof relationship with God. Enoch was the most dedicated to the cause of seeking a closer relationship with God among those who did so. 
Enoch and his brothers erected an altar to worship and offer sacrifices to God in their account of the great flood. It was said that Enoch offered the sacrifice in front of the Lord during the sacrifice by ascending. The altar shook at this movement, and a knife fell into his hand. This was carried on by his son Methuselah and all the prophets of the Old Testament. Methuselah was seized, and he saw an awful vision of God's impending flood. Sa'ani, his son's bride, became a virgin in her later years after his passing. While she was judged, her miraculous kid was spared. She passed away at her husband's feet not long after. He was found in the secret cemetery where his mother was interred, clothed, and fully grown. Methuselah's children, Nia and No, found him soon after and learned he was beautiful and that he was God's representative, thus re-establishing their priestly ancestry. God gave the infant, Melchizedek, orders to be brought to heaven by the angel Michael after forty days with his father. At that moment, God called Melchizedek his child and requested that he be taken to heaven. Nera, his earthly father, lamented his passing and passed away without leaving the world with any wealth. Methuselah saw the river of doom after Nera passed away. The building of the ark became inevitable since there was no priest to lead the people in the direction of God. Following a thorough investigation into Enoch's life, scholars and religious authorities think they have discovered something important. It appears that there may be hidden riddles within the 5,000-year-old book that was discovered in Egypt. It makes reference to a dire warning about human life that was documented thousands of years ago and seen in a vision. Pre-flood prophet and one of the first, Enoch is acknowledged as having made more contributions to human history than any other religious figure. He honed his writing abilities by first translating words into sentences and then coming up with documentation. There are numerous old texts from the time of Enoch that have never been translated. He most likely wrote the Book of Enoch, or someone in his family did. He is credited by numerous academics as the author of several. Pseudo-epigraphic Midrashim, such as Sef Hiat, He Hanok, Sef Rabati, and Sef Hanuk, all of which are contained in Sef Haha. The division of the Book of Enoch is represented by these four books. The 5,000-year-old manuscript, which appeared to contain a terrible warning about human life, made headlines when it was found. It took several research studies before it became evident that the sentences might have a message for the future. Many Christians hold that Jesus died and rose again to atone for our sins and that Elijah was the only prophet to overcome death. It is also thought that Enoch's life had a unique conclusion while he was on earth, and that God merely and truly welcomed him into heaven, sparing Enoch from having to die a terrible death. Numerous generations have heard and been inspired by this story since then. The Book of Enoch is divided into five divisions by academics. The volumes of Watchers, Parables, Luminaries, Dreams, and Epistle are among the volumes written by Enoch. The Book of Enoch has been translated and interpreted by numerous writers and church fathers. Whether or whether Christians and other believers should study it and consider it to be a part of the Bible is the primary point of contention. Despite assertions that the inspiration for the texts originated with the Holy Spirit, it was frequently found during translation that the passages depart from conventional orthodox doctrine and practice. This work has been deemed unworthy of additional investigation by some. Another worry was that the book's strong use of imagery and symbolism, which may be easily misinterpreted, would lead to uncertainty in one's faith and application of biblical principles. Ethiopia has made great efforts to preserve its precious artifacts in spite of these misgivings, with an emphasis on the book's conclusions. Perched atop a hill in the nation, the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church is made of naturally carved stones that have been fashioned into a structure with doors, windows, staircases, and walls covered with amazing literary writings. 
It is one of the largest churches in the world with more than 45 million members. New buildings have also been added to several historic locations and many of these have been made public. It is widely known that the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church is in possession of numerous ancient spiritual writings and publications that are not accessible to the general public. The goal of translating some of these books into English is to produce an entire Ethiopian Orthodox Bible. Nowadays, the most read books are the Jubilees and the Book of Enoch, which were found among the Dead Sea Scrolls. The works of Enoch were banned by church fathers in the second century, and with good reason, they were forgotten. James Bruce did not discover the manuscripts of one Enoch until 1773, which shed light on how Christianity developed during the Middle Ages and how Judaism's second temple influenced its origins. Richard Lawrence started translating a manuscript by Bruce in 1821. These forms were separated into the Book of the Watchers, the Book of Dreams, the Astronomical Book, and the Epistle of Enoch, together known as the Gears of One Enoch, according to fragments from Greek antiquities and Christian excerpts. A few of the texts were also examined and categorized as works of anthropology, sometimes referred to as the Book of Parables or Enoch's Parables. There has been a stir among European intellectuals and Christians over the discovery of these manuscripts. The translated version of the Book of Enoch was first published in 1906 by R. H. Charles, an Ethiopian, and is currently recognized as the most accurate and comprehensive version available. The book's applicability, Enoch's history, commentary, and a thorough, well-written synopsis are all included in addition to the translation's simplification. The introduction, final day, book of courses on celestial lights, history of the children of Israel, and ten eras were its five divisions. In order to facilitate his translation, Charles divided the book into sections that addressed different aspects of the ideas they represent, such as religion, cosmology, and ancient history. Since its first release, a number of versions have been released, some of which have been updated, clarified, simplified, or altered. It is thought to be the most important piece of apocalyptic writing from the Second Temple era. It was also proposed that it would have come in the order of the Old Testament Apocrypha and the New Testament if it had been largely recognized in the Protestant Bible. The Book of Enoch was initially written in Aramaic, according to researcher Joseph Haley, and parts of the text mixed Hebrew and Aramaic, according to Charles. Ethiopian Jews have reason to believe they are descended from Enoch based on stories from many generations after Enoch. In the Old Testament, fluent Queen Sheba paid a visit to King Solomon, his great-great-grandson. She never saw Solomon or his father, but she claimed to have heard about his forebears, which was one of the reasons she gave the young king such expensive gifts. Acknowledging his ancestry, the Arabian queen honored the god they both worshipped. Throughout the king's reign, her gifts were the most abundant, and it was unheard of to receive praise from someone as influential as her afterwards. Many attempts have been made to determine the language that the Jews really spoke in Enoch's day. Nonetheless, the languages have altered and evolved like other languages, making it challenging to reach firm conclusions. Greek may be needed for certain translations, even though there are hints that it was written in ancient Hebrew or Aramaic. Richard Buckham thinks that those who have a deep knowledge of Judaism might be able to identify its original author as it has been demonstrated to have been written during the construction of the Second Temple. Qumran Cave 4 had some pieces of Greek translations in addition to the discovery of one Enoch in Egypt. Some people regard the ancient original Aramaic used to write these documents to be sacred and a sign language. But it's vital to remember that these fragments were unimportant and lacking in specific information until 1947 when real manuscripts were found close to the Dead Sea. These scrolls, sometimes referred to as the Essenes, 
record ancient Judaism and Christianity, as well as historical, theological, and cultural life. The world was certain that the 500-year-old book found in Egypt would indicate a terrible revelation about human life, and that nothing good could emerge from the king's lost book. R. H. Charles praised the published book for unlocking ancient wisdom and providing readers with a clearer understanding of the topics covered in each section. The Book of Watchers begins with describing Enoch's vision from God, his blessings, and his knowledge of the universe, the stars, the sun, the seasons, and every aspect of the earth that makes it entire. He also discusses the strange species that have evolved on earth as a result of encounters between fallen angels and earthly women, as well as the consequences of these relationships. Enoch explains the three parables he was taught in the second book. The celestial world and astrology are the main topics of the third volume. His two dream visions of an impending calamity which transpired 52. Years apart are the subject of the fourth book. The last book focused on his epistle and how he shared his visions with his brothers before admonishing them to repent. The book also has a special portion addressed to his son, Methuselah, giving him lifelong advice to live according to moral precepts. Enoch made a distinction in chapter 7 of his story between angels who were still beautiful and fallen angels that began to cause chaos and spread sin on earth. They were both horrible and fantastic spectators, he said. He went on to say that the disobedient watchers turned away from God and followed their ruler, Satan. Additionally, the narrative describes how archangels take Enoch across the sky and how imprisoned angels bow down to him. He spoke of fallen angels uniting with beautiful human women in chapter 6 and taking them as husbands, just like in Genesis. This population produced giants and strong children known as the Nephilim, among other defects. The fallen angels imparted magic and evil rites to humanity as well. Azazel is a well-known figure among these fallen beings. His name in Aramaic refers to demonic spirits that resemble satanic, goat-like creatures. This idea is comparable to the Jewish custom of the scapegoat, in which on the Day of Atonement a goat is released from a mountain, symbolically bearing the sins of the Israelites. This ritual represented both Israelite repentance and divine pardon. In the New Testament, Jesus Christ is frequently referred to as the Son of Man in faithful visions and prophetic predictions, which is commonly understood to be a designation for his association with humanity. The Book of Enoch does not say this. The term was found to have been employed by Enoch, suggesting that Aramaic, Hebrew, and apocalyptic writings may have a deeper meaning. Although the term, Son of Man, in Aramaic, refers to all people. It is specifically used to refer to those who identify as such. The prophet Ezekiel referred to himself as the Son of Man in the Hebrew text when God spoke to him. He also underlined that he was born of a woman and possessed human traits in contrast to angels and other things. Jesus Christ, who likens himself to being composed of flesh and bones and suffering through the anguish of death, is likewise connected to the Hebrew concept. Experts say that the apocalyptic view of Jesus Christ is that he presents himself as a holy and divine person who will carry out the final act of redemption for God's people. Enoch claimed that after being taken to the second heaven, he saw darkness that was even worse than what was on earth. Angels were confined and watched over in the darkness, waiting for God to judge them. They were weeping bitterly. They told him they were fallen angels who had rebelled against God in favor of their master and were being held captive in the fifth heaven together with other rebels when he asked who they were. In other words, the story of the evil watchers in Enoch's second book did not go unpunished and they were destined for eternal suffering. Next, Enoch draws a cosmic map of the heavens that resembles the path taken by the solar system. This map is referred to as the celestial orbit, or heavenly circle. Enoch claims that the highest circle is known as Cruno, Aphrodite is the second, and Eris is the third. 
the moon is located in the lower circle, which is identified as the seventh, Hermes as the sixth, and Zeus as the fifth. They are equivalent to Saturn, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Mercury in Greek. These planets are depicted as dazzling lights within a heavenly circle in 2 Enoch. In addition, a focus space separates the celestial space into three dimensions. It is known by the name Suda, and its dimensions are known as perceived space. Perceived space is tangible and is defined by factors like location, design, measurements, and arrangement. The second category, conceptualized space, is essentially mental. One placement in the last section affects the three chambers. It is intrinsically connected to people, society, and history. Enoch completed all three journeys, narrating his experiences with a clear and precise grasp of cosmology and identifying God as the common denominator that binds all creatures, both in heaven and on earth. Going on to ancient perspectives on death and the afterlife, we get at the Book of Two Ways through the Egyptian Book of the Dead. The Book of Two Ways explains how a person's soul or life form may quietly transition to the God of death after death. The passage into the underworld is portrayed in the text as either land or water. It goes on to claim that the soul must fight and win against demons, fire, armed guards, and doorkeepers who protect the body of Horus, the god of the dead, no matter what the situation. It is said that a soul becomes immortal if it is fortunate enough to pass the god of the dead. It was estimated that the book was approximately 4,000 years old when it was discovered in 2012. While conducting archaeology on one of King Iraq's graves, Harco Williams discovered it. From 255 to 1650 BCE, this long-forgotten tomb on top of a cliff close to Deir el Bersha functioned as the principal cemetery for regional lords and governors in the Egyptian Middle Kingdom. It was found on the coffin of a woman named Ankh. Some of its fragments were found and linked to the 2010 BCE pharaoh Mentuhotep Sekun. The fragments appear to be far older than the other sections that were discovered based on this result. And further significant archaeological finding was discovered in Egypt when a 4,300-year-old tomb near Giza El Muda, Cairo, was found. Our understanding of the history and burial customs of ancient Egypt is enhanced by this tomb. During the excavations, a number of artifacts were found, including 12 carved figures that were found in the burial pit two feet below the surface. Additionally, one of the statues was thought to contain a fairly complete mummy, one of the few that have been found. Come Jade, the superintendent of nobles and inspector of officials who was also a priest in the Unas Pyramid, was the most famous person buried in the area. The king's secret keeper and assistant, Mary, has the second largest tomb. A few others, including two unnamed couples, were also present. The northern, middle TTI pyramid sector, western pyramid of Unas section, and southern sectors are the five sectors that make up the burial site. In the meantime, archaeologists have located the burial temple of Nate, an ancient Egyptian queen who was the daughter and wife of King Teti, the first pharaoh of the 6th dynasty at the Saqqara necropolis close to the well-known pyramids of Giza. She was interred next to the pyramids King Teti erected and was thought to have passed away some 4,200 years ago. This discovery marked the first indication that King Teti had more than two wives, possibly even a third, as yet unidentified, before numerous. Old manuscripts were examined and a record of her existence was found in the chronicles of the formerly kingdom of ancient Egypt. The corpse in the temple was unknown. In addition, the group found more than 22 burial pits in the temple, which held more than 54 vibrant coffins, a dozen mummies, pots, stelae, ushabti figurines, and tiny wooden boats with carved sailors. It was discovered that the majority of the wooden structures date back 3,000 years. In the long-lost tomb of Queen Nate, the wife of King Teddy, 
a 13-foot-long scroll believed to be the Book of the Dead was found. Chapter 17 of the Book of the Dead is among the most significant artifacts found at the location. It was found that the inscription, which was written in hieroglyphics, talked of a spirit that goes to paradise after death. Payaf was the name on the tomb indicating who owned the scroll. On the site, archaeologists discovered four statues bearing the same name surrounded by wooden coffins. It was discovered after extensive investigation that Queen Nate was to be served by the coffins and figures in the hereafter. The concept of extraterrestrial life was more widely known in ancient Egypt than has been demonstrated thus far. It is believed that a number of unique architectural formations were built with the aid of highly developed living organisms. One of the most comprehensive reports from the scribes of Pharaoh Thutmose III around 1440 BC can be found in the Book of Sightings known as the Thule Papyrus. In 1933, Alberto Thule, the director of the Vatican Museum in Egypt, rediscovered the long-lost proof. After being converted into hieroglyphs, the inscriptions explained the description of fire disks floating over Lower Egypt. The disks were described as being headless, having mouths that made no sound but reeked of foul air and having road-like dimensions for length and width. It was said to have moved closer to the king's mansion, but until scrolls were examined, nobody was aware of what they were. Over several days, the burning disks became larger, moving closer to the sun and farther into the sky in the evening. This fascinating report adds a puzzling chapter to the skies over Lower Egypt, detailing the bizarre phenomena of headless fiery disks. It is written in hieroglyphs. On the other hand, it is evident from Enoch's life what positive consequences and benefits await those who commit their lives to God. He acted as God's representative to humanity during his existence, and he was exempt from all that ordinary people go through, including grief and death. As one of the first people to be allowed entry into God's abode, he was also able to communicate with angels and have visions of the future. Enoch had to find his way to the afterlife, just like other people do, even though he never lost his soul. Rather, he illuminated limitless knowledge that he shared with the world like a torch. The revelations made in this century have caused Christians to reevaluate their approach to worshiping God and his work served as an inspiration for the words of the subsequent prophets and apostles of Christ. What thoughts do you have about the Book of Enoch? Does it go against what Christians believe, reveal hidden gems that have been hidden away or lost to antiquity, or both? In the comments section, express your thoughts. To receive updates about new videos, remember to like, share, and subscribe.